management is important in all fields, but especially engineering. It's a strange position to be in between the engineers who spend their lives in code and almost anyone else, be it your CEO, the product team, design, your users, anyone else. And the role of the manager is to try and smooth out all of the roughness between all of these different things. And more importantly, it's to set up their engineers for success. I've met a disappointing number of engineering managers who don't really think about their engineering management at all, much less in a way that's cohesive and conductive to growth for their engineers. And I wanna talk a bit about how management can set up their engineers for success, both on the management side, so if your manager, definitely watch this, but also for the people who are being managed. So if you're an employee and an engineer whose manager may be helping you or maybe isn't helping you enough, I hope what we talk about here can help improve that relationship and help you find success. One of the most important things you can build as a manager is trust. And almost every decision I make as a manager is to help build trust across the companies that I work at. When I'm running a team, it's my job to make sure everybody on the team is bought in and gets what's going on and feels like they understand and are trusted in the work that they're doing and contributing. And if any person on a team has reservations about the way something's being built, that's something that we as a team should discuss. I'm really big on Strong Opinions Weekly Held, where someone on the team can strongly commit to a thing. Doesn't matter if they're the principal tech lead from Amazon that's worked there for eight years, or if they're a brand new intern that we just hired. If someone has a strong belief that something should be a different way and they can back it up, everyone should listen and learn from it. And it can go many different ways. They can be right and we all learn from it. They can be wrong and we can teach them. Or and this is an underrated option. We can know they're wrong, find it hard to convince them and let them go be wrong for a bit. One of the best things you can do as an engineering manager is let your engineers fail especially when you know they're going to fail and you know the consequences of that failure aren't very big. If you know some tech that some engineer wants to adopt isn't going to work and it's going to fail pretty early on, you can say that they might not listen. And if they don't, let them go do it. It shows that you trust them. And honestly, they might be right, in which case you get to adopt the better solution that they proposed, or you get to let them learn and they build trust and capability in that time. And now the next time they make a recommendation or push for something to be different, they're going to have that much more experience making decisions around what they push for. And obviously, if they consistently push bad things and consistently are breaking stuff, that's a different conversation. But I find most engineers aren't given quite enough leash, especially when the engineering manager has a technical background. Something that's been hard for me as an engineering manager is I've been on teams that I'm managing engineers for where the engineers know more and are more tuned in than me. It's hard to believe, like, I'm the YouTube channel everyone's learning from, but honestly, I'm consistently surprised by just how capable and tuned in the engineers I work with are. And if you're watching this video right now, you might be one of the more clued in people on your team. I think it's worthwhile for more managers to recognize that and help build into the people who care more and look into these things in their free time and want to keep learning and bring what they learn to the team. It's one of the most valuable ways to grow as an engineer, but more importantly, it gives you one of the most valuable resources any team can have, energy. If I've learned anything about the devs who hang out in my chat and watch these videos as soon as they drop and are out here learning for fun, it's that they have the energy your company needs to thrive. Code bases don't live or die on the technology choices. They don't live or die on how good the engineers you hire are. It comes down to who has the energy to make sure shit moves. And do they have the energy for long enough to keep it moving through maintenance windows, through hard problems, and through all of the pain any project will have until it finds the users in the state it needs to be in. And it's so easy for engineering managers to just throw all of that away and to see a person on the team who's really energized about this better way to do something and say no because it doesn't immediately line up with business goals. There is no business goal that isn't accelerated by a team that's energized by the work they're doing. Even if the thing bringing their energy is in a different direction from where you want to be, that energy means you can get where you want to be way fucking faster. And honestly, I'm a little thankful so many companies don't get this because it's the only reason startups can exist in the first place. There's no reason a company like Twitch shouldn't be able to run circles about, around the stuff that I'm doing with my roommate and co-founder, but they can't because every time someone has the energy to make something real happen for the users, they get burnt out before they can apply it. And it's your job as a manager to find the people who are bringing this energy and give them everything they need to maintain it and share it with the team. It's so important to manage and help your team manage 
their energy levels and their excitement about the work they're doing. And you should be willing to take some big risks and get into some fights with your executives in order to do that for them if you're the manager in this position. I wanted to talk a bit about one of my favorite engineering managers. Y'all might already know him. You might not even think of him as an engineering manager. Talking about Luke Lafrene from Linus Tech Tips. He just became the CTO of all of LTT and he was scared shitless because he's never been a real engineer. He never worked on code for a living. He never had an engineering manager of his own. He just wanted to build things for LTT and ended up being the person in charge of building Floatplane. So pretty much every engineer he works with and is hired is a better engineer than him. And he knows that and embraces it and uses it to make himself better too. And with Linus as the CEO running the business and with Luke as the CTO running the tech, the expectation is the tech side will run the same way that the rest of the business does, where you have a deadline and it gets hit. And in tech, we all know deadlines are imaginary. And a lot of Luke's role is translating between developer speak and timelines and how his team needs to work and communicating that with the rest of Linus Tech Tips to make sure the engineers have what they need. As such, he's kind of taken the role of exploring new things. And I know he's become a regular viewer of the channel because he wants to find things to bring to the team. He noticed this thing the team needed and brought them energy and started doing it himself. And he's now bringing Vercel and Next.js technology to his company at Floatplane and at Linus Tech Tips. He found out about these things and he thought they'd bring value to the company. You know what? He was absolutely right. Not only did doing that research and finding those technologies give his engineers excitement and motivation to keep iterating on these things, it also significantly widened the pool of new people they could bring in and increased the level of energy those people will come in with. I personally now that he's reached out to me am excitedly referring engineers his way for the next era of Linus Tech Tip stuff. And honestly, him reaching out to me to talk about this stuff is one of the coolest things he could do as an eng manager. He realized he didn't have other engineering managers to talk to about these things. So he started watching my channel and talking to me more when he knew I kind of had that role. A few weeks ago, we had a four hour Discord call just talking about all this stuff because he wants to do as well as he can for his team. And he wants to make sure he understands what that is. And honestly, most of the call was me just reinforcing what he was already doing, which is so cool. He just wanted to set up his team for success. And because he's been through the YouTube grind, he knows how important energy is. And he really pushed to maintain that energy on the team. And the result is incredible things happening. So yeah, I wanted to shout out Luke in particular for being a, a stellar example of what successful engineering management looks like. It doesn't always look like somebody who's been coding for 10 years. And I wanted to reinforce that point. There's one more thing I bring up and I kind of need to do another video about this in the future. I have a rule I often enforce when I bring on new teammates that I'm working with. I call it the dumb question rule. I set a minimum number of dumb questions a new teammate has to ask every day for their first couple weeks. Like you have to ask minimum two dumb questions every work day because otherwise, and we've all been there, it feels awful to be stuck on something you, you feel like you should know the answer to. It should just be in a doc somewhere or somebody said it before and you missed it and you feel stupid for it. You need to feed into that because a big part of development is feeling dumb and it's your job to help people get through that because feeling dumb for too long makes you lose all your energy. <laughs> and if you can provide a comfortable way for developers to work through that moment and maintain their energy when they do it, then by the end of their first week, they're way more excited to contribute because all the dumb things that would have held them up, getting their dev environment set up, figuring out which GitHub account they have to sign in with when, and all of the things that most engineers are scared to ask about, if you can help them through that, if you can force them through that, they come out way more excited to contribute. And I've seen this take month plus long onboarding windows and knock them down into a few days. So if you take anything from this, it should be let people fail, build trust and feed into the people who are bringing energy, because those are the things that make your team successful, not how many tickets you close every week or how good your top engineer is at TypeScript. The value comes from the cohesiveness, the focus, the trust and the energy the people on your team bring. And it's your job to make them comfortable and excited to bring all of that to the workplace. I hope this is helpful. I don't talk about the engineering management stuff as much. So let me know if you like this and I'll do more videos of this style. I really want to see engineering management improve and don't get me started on interviews. It's a whole separate problem. Go build some trust, energize some engineers and ask some stupid questions because it is so important for the growth and success of your teams. Thank you guys as always. I'll pin another video about eng management and team stuff here. Probably my interview video because I like that one a lot. Hope this was helpful. Peace nerds.